Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Hello. Hi, my name is Roger. How are you doing? Today we're gonna meet two guys from the band Soul Drainer. And uh, let's see, how should you describe their music? It sounds like you're dying slowly in a beautiful way. Yeah, there you have it. They're gonna show me around their studio and we're gonna talk a little bit of uh, music in general, how they write their song. And we get a couple of tour memories from Russia. It was really pleasant to meet them, so stick around. I also want to say thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you like the video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, send me a message and let me know what I should do. I also have a competition going on, the Roger That Song of 2021 competition, where you can win the Hand Clap Studio plugin from Robotic Bean. Links are down below. Enough of me talking now. Let's talk to the guys in Soul Drainer. So now I'm in the studio, the metal f factory. Yeah. Uh, it will be in English, Metallfabriken in Swedish. And I'm here with Marcus and Hugo. <laughs> Hi, Marcus. Hi, man. Hugo. Hello, man. <laughs> so uh, we are in your studio. So please let me see what you've got, what you're doing here. Yeah, actually, we're in the middle of a recording, actually. So uh, we have been recording one song. And uh, so we're working on a new album. Um, and here's the drum kit, as you can see. Um, it's a double double bass kick <laughs> set. I don't know what to say. It's a Parma Star Classic uh, Bubinga Bubinga uh, drum kit. Really cool kit. Sounds massive. Sounds great. Yeah. It's not that huge. Uh, my preconceptions when it comes to metal is yeah. that it that they have like eight toms and sixteen yeah. cymbals. Yeah. Uh, I would like some more symbols, but um, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but those you have are pretty good. Yeah, they work fine. It's a mashup of uh, different brands, but it's it's okay. It yeah, works. cool. Mm -hmm. But the the key is the I mean the the, the drum set, the Tama kit. It's really really good, and it looks cool. I think. Yeah, it's really good. Looks amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You might get like nearly normal, I see, with the bass drum kick and snare mics, but you have some special thing on the toms. Yeah. Actually, here we have a, a microphone on top and on bottom. On the bottom also, yeah? Yes, uh, under the toms here. So, but they are connected to each other in the same cable. Uh, so, I don't know, it's, it's to save channels and to have less options because I am tired of all the options in the studio. So I'd like to commit early. So if I do it like this, put both microphones on the same channel, I, can, uh, I can't change it afterwards. And I think it's, uh, it works all right. We get a bit more bottom and I think they cancel out some uh, mid-range together actually. And the bottom cable is uh, face inverted, of course. Cool. Have you chosen the mics for it, or have you just tried what you have and find the best solution for that? Uh, this time we took what we had, actually. So. Uh, but it works. It works really well, and uh, yeah, Audix microphones. Usually we have these these Audix mic microphones on the the top shelves, uh, but. This time we chose those uh, Sennheiser 604s. I use the same ones myself. Yeah. I think they are as close to a 421 as you can get, yeah, right. but in a smaller package. Yeah. I wish I had all 
all the microphones in the world so so I could try them, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, no one have. <laughs> no. no one have. Uh, and for the kick, we we usually use the D6, but uh, we found that this sure Beta 52 works work much better today for our purpose it's a little more is rock it, and roll yeah it, it has a little bit more punch doesn't yeah. it yeah the d6 is very round and uh, scooped, scooped. Yeah. my experience with the d6 is that it works extremely good for live music yeah. if i want the skin attack i choose another microphone in the studio all right cool i think the d6 is more metal but and that's kind of a contradiction because we play metal and but it's it's a little too scooped for for our sound today okay uh, hmm? the taste varies ev will vary every day and we usually put this in the middle of the kick on uh, it just lay down on the on a pillow instead of putting it in the hole yeah are you triggering uh, them toms uh, and uh, snare and kick as well not on this recording, actually. No. Not. No. When we rehearse. We... Are you the only metal band in the world that doesn't <laughs> trigger the kick? Yeah, maybe. The <laughs> only one. We're the first. No. <laughs> what we have done on this recording, actually, was... Uh, we, we haven't uh, replaced any drums or triggered it, so... But I have added a room uh, sound. Uh, ah. In, in trigging. Uh, by trigging. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so that works works pretty well. Yeah, I mean, your room here isn't extremely small, but it's not a big room either, so... It's a uh, dead room. Yeah. Yeah. It's When you have a small room, I think it's better to do it dead. Yeah. Actually. But there are a few other stuff in the, in the room as well. Um, uh, you have some guitar amplifier with baffles here. Yeah. Like big gobos. Yeah. And we actually heard uh, someone mention on YouTube that on each uh, element, cone, these are V30s, vintage 30 elements in this Marshall cabinet. And you have a glue, glue dot on every cone, right? Because the cables are glued to the, to the cone. Yeah. And if you put the mic right over that glue dot, you get less harsh sound. Oh, and really? Yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't believe it either, but it actually works. So we have mic the glue dots. <laughs> you have mic the glue dots, <laughs> yeah. and it sounds sound amazing. <laughs> uh, because on metal, the guitar sound is so full of all the frequencies, kind of. Yeah, you, you feel the spectra from 100 hertz to 10,000 hertz. Yeah. Uh, so it's more like a, a, a bruise. A noise. 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 Yeah. Noise. So if, uh, and you don't want too much of that because uh, your ears will get fatigued re really fast. So, uh, yeah. And I right. presume that you expect the audience to listen to your music pretty loud and then it can't be harsh as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. All uh, volume on 11. Uh, you have a bass amplifier, Ampeg 810, uh, at least a speaker. Yeah, correct. Uh, we <coughs> use the... Um, dark glass. Yeah, dark glass. It's gone. It's in the control ah. room. I don't know what it's called. Small, powerful piece of amplifier. Hmm? Uh, sounds really metal. <laughs> In a, in a good way. Uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this where you are rehearsing also when you, yeah. before a gig or a tour? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Cool. Shall we go into the control room? All right. Now we are in the control room, and Marcus and Hugo are going to show us around a little bit around their control room and what gear they use and why they use it. All right. So Marcus is sitting in the cockpit yes. of the control room <laughs> <laughs> yeah so here um, uh, let's turn to the, the amplifiers the amplifiers first yes th those are the the 
most important part of the... I don't know, no it's not. But it's the great. We have uh, the tap amps. This one is uh, our favorite. Huh? It's built in Sweden, in Borlänge. Um, and uh, we have some classics. The 5150 is uh, a trusted workhorse. For yeah, people. powerful. Yeah, and a couple of morsels. And a dime, a very strange dime bag transistor amplifier. Uh, sounds pretty cool too. And a dark glass bass. Oh, that's the bass yes. uh, thing. Uh, Microtubes 900. Huh? JCM 900 from Marso, I think many people know about. But And you have two of them, and both are modified in some kind of way. Yes. Uh, that one is the uh, Folkeson mod. I don't know which mod uh, it is actually, but uh, it is modded for more gain. Okay. And this uh, left one is from Tap Amps also. The one that made the... The, the Tap Amp. <laughs> yeah, the Tap Amp. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Logical, in a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should we talk about this recording a bit? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, we have recorded one, one song. One song so far. And it's a slow one. With a lot of room and distortion. Should I play some? Yeah, if you want to. There's a lot of uh, distortion and room in the drums. So this is Ooh. not what you uh, expect to get from this small room. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, but the bass drum was like, wow. <laughs> uh, it was huge and, and punchy at the same time, but that was like a distortion tail on the bass drum that I have had. I don't think I've heard that before. That's true. Uh, I was inspired by a producer called uh, Chad Blake. Oh, Chad Blake. Yeah. Sansub guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I actually ran the kick and snare, all the shells actually, the kick, snare and toms through this uh, Sansamp. And uh, these are probably the settings as well, um, because I just did it a couple of weeks, weeks ago. <laughs> the sand samp guy. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> and that works amazing. I also, I don't know, I, I've taken some kind of producer role in this, and I, um, uh, I wanted to print the effects as well. You know, uh, reverbs and delays from uh, external boxes instead of using those very pristine digital reverbs from the computer. So I uh, have actually used the Yamaha SPX90 for chorus on the bass and on some guitars and a snare reverb also from the SPX90. Uh, SPX90 is pretty famous for its snare reverb. It sounds like you're throwing rocks in a container or something. Yeah, yeah. in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, this is a drum uh, distortion, distorted drum track. <laughs> sounds sick. <laughs> and a drum reverb from the SPX90. Whoa.
nice studio tour. Thank you for that. When did you start with music? At what age did you start with music? Oh, I remember getting a guitar from my grandfather when he passed when I was in the sixth grade. So like 13? Yeah. 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 Six years old and I got a keyboard and I played a lot of uh, church stuff like... Religious uh, music? Yeah, actually. My, my mom worked in the, in the church, so yeah. Hmm. So uh, I'm actually... A... Seems pretty close to a death metal band. Yeah. So yeah. you're a Christian bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask if it always have been drums, but no. no. When did you start playing drums? Uh, maybe it was like uh, 12, maybe. 12? Yeah, played in the school band. Like uh, We had a... I don't know what we were called, but we played uh, metal, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. You've got a guitar. I play guitar and I sing. And you have four members in the band, right? Yes. Uh, tell me about the other two when they are not around. Uh, we have Jocke on bass. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Gustav on second guitar. And he's an old uh, bandmate. Yeah, with me. My, my uh, earlier bands. Can you describe your band musically? <laughs> yeah, it's... It is some kind of... Death metal, of course, as yeah. you know, but it, yeah, it's dark and huge, huge, dark and uh, tragic, tragic, <laughs> yeah, sad, mm. evil, angry. It's not f no, no, not fast uh, death metal, but uh, melodic. Yeah, I think we sometime said in an interview that it, it sounds like you're dying slowly in a beautiful way. No, dying violently in a beautiful way. Oh. Yeah. That's how we sound. Okay. <laughs> uh, I asked uh, my audience if they had questions for you, and I got a couple of questions. Uh, this is uh, from uh, a friend of mine that actually is from Iran, and she asked, she said that your music is very angry. Yeah. So. Do you play angry music so you don't have have to be angry privately? Yeah. It's not st so we don't have to be angry <laughs> privately, but we I think we are very nice people. So yeah. I think we get all our anger out with our music. <laughs> I can uh, agree with that. They are very nice people, but they are not angry with the neighbors when they are on stage. They want them dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how angry they are. Yeah. On stage. Not in real life. Uh, you have done some tours. Yeah. Uh, through Europe. Uh, I read somewhere about Russia. Yeah, Russia mm -hmm. was a <laughs> special one. Yeah. Lovely yeah. tour. But the best. Was, was that the best tour? Yeah. Yeah, in some way. Yes. Any special tour memory from Russia that you want to share? The car, maybe? In general, it's yeah, it was a Russian car. Yeah, the, the driver. It said he was gonna speak uh, really good English and drive a professional van. It it was in the contract for the tour, and when he when we arrived in Moscow, this old like uh, uh, from ninety six maybe. Yeah, was it a Volkswagen? Yeah, Volkswagen ninety six. Black smoke everywhere, and no seatbelts in Russia. Yeah, and he couldn't speak English. And, <laughs> and we said that we we need seatbelts. Yeah, because we want we were going six hundred uh, miles. Oh, I mean uh, six thousand. Russia is a very big country, yeah. so yeah. there are distances. Yeah. And so we said we we really need seatbelts. Hello, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, no problem. No, no, don't worry. Say, um, oh, he said, <laughs> no, but we we want seatbelts. No, no, no need. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. Vodka. 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 Save the, the tour. <laughs> he was. I think he was a really great. Driver. He was the really good driver, Very and good. he learned some English. Uh, yeah. So okay. it's, it's. But the best memory from Russia 
in a happy memory is that the, the audience, the people, was yeah. so grateful to see you, to see us. Oh, really? I have never been so touched by talking to them, and because after the show they come came to us and uh, explained how much they loved us and the music, and uh, it was the best concert they've been to in their life, and and it was small clubs and. Uh, yeah, they were so grateful. Someone yeah. was w tearful, you know, and emotional. They wanted to show pictures and gave give us photos from. He went home to bring photos and give them to to us, and yeah, it was amazing. So the conclusion is that you are rock stars in Russia. Yeah, <laughs> felt like that. <laughs> no, no, but uh, you've also toured around Europe uh, yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. Is it all over Europe, Northern Europe, maybe? Mostly, mostly uh, east. Mostly East Europe. Yeah. Mostly East Europe. Yeah. Poland. Yeah. Czech, Czech Republic. Germany. And... Is the style of music very popular in those countries, or? I think so. Yeah, yeah Poland. Especially. Yeah, I think Poland. I ha we have our best fans in Poland, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think they they appreciate this kind of music, you know. Yeah. If you don't have. Yeah, I think so. Okay. How do you write your songs? Uh, usually, it's me and Gustav. The other guitar player. Yeah, who play guitar, and uh, when I write a song, I do it at home. On my computer, we program drums just to get some riff done, and uh, yeah, lay out some kind of basic. Or sometimes it's it's a complete song, and then we come here and listen to it and try some real drums on it. Or yeah, but how much input do you have on those songs, Hugo? Uh, pretty much, I would say, because. I'm the drummer. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you all come with ideas yeah, how you of can course. improve or of course. Uh, redo can yeah, we take but, this uh, part before that or often it's I mean Marcus ideas is often really good, so it's yeah. minor changes. Okay. Oh. oh but can I say that it starts with either a song or at least an idea from one one of you? Uh, and you all sort of build it, the last pieces together as uh, to make, or yeah, that sounds pretty much how it yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when comes the lyrics? Is that a thing you have in mind from the beginning? No, it comes from how the song feels. Yeah. Oh, from the feeling of the song. Yeah. yeah. How it end up, ends up, the yeah. feeling. And usually, they sound like someone is dying. So it's pretty easy to to go that way in the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Just a moment ago, you said that you play death metal, but it's very melodic. Yeah. And I agree, but the melodic part is in the guitars, or maybe the bass line, or even maybe sometimes in the synths that you you have. Yeah. It's not in the vocals. Like the vocal have a metal melody. Vocal is more. <sighs> More rhythmic. Yeah, it's more. It's more of a timing Percussive. thing. Percussive. Yeah. Yeah. It, sometimes I can growl with some kind of tone. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes uh, I don't want that, so it's it's different. Yeah. From part to part, maybe a chorus can be a growling vocal with some tone in it. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about synths. When I listen to your music, especially the, the slower the song gets, the more synths you have. Yeah. Uh, but you you got a lot of synths in many songs, yeah. many orchestral sounds and uh, epic uh, big sounds, but also some small nasty si sounds on the side of the stereo image that triggers the ear sometimes. Yeah. Uh, how do you do with the synths live? We are. Yeah, Hugo can explain. Yeah, we are playing with backtracks. You do backtracks? Yeah, of course. It wouldn't be possible if we didn't. So I have a click track for mm. every song and uh, a computer and interface. And we send out uh, the backtracks to front of house and I get the click tracks. Ah, cool. Are all songs with backtracks or do you have songs that... All songs. We have one without... Yeah, we have only one. Yeah, yeah, biological experiments. Yeah, 
yeah, it's without <laughs> back tracks. Okay. But we play that with a click track anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. We want to be tight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to rush things when you have the adrenaline yeah. of the audience. So of course. It's easy to play 8 BPM too fast when the audience is in front of you. So yeah. yeah. Is there a difference in your songs from the studio version compared to live? Do you rearrange them some way or no, it's no. pretty much the same. Sometimes you get some feeling and throw a a drum feel where it's not supposed to be, but I mean Yeah, but that's improvisation. Yeah, but from, but from basically each it's, musician. It's the same as the You don't yeah. make longer intros, longer guitar short solos or stuff like that. Sometimes we add intros yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a separate part uh, in the show. Yeah. And we actually have a couple of songs that have long fade outs and that we can't do uh, live. So <laughs> we have made our uh, new end of the song. A uh, new ending, yeah. Yeah, oh. a more a quick ending, so to speak. So, um. How much do you think, both on the record, but especially live maybe, about the sort of drama of the concert? Because you, if it's loud and aggressive all the time, you don't hear the loud and aggressive after a while because you get so used to it. So you have to take it down and take it up. And take it. Yeah. How much do you think about that? Uh, we ask our bass uh, man, Jocke, because he thinks about that a lot. Huh? So uh, usually we have a set list. Maybe we, if uh, me and Hugo are by ourselves here in the practice space so we figure out a set list and then we we ask uh, Jocke how what he thinks and he starts to hmm this one is like that so we gotta put down the drama after that one so we should change those two and so he's exactly into that kind of okay business. so he's the, the drama expert yes yeah. yes could we say the drama queen the drama queen can yeah. we say that yeah, yeah we, we can call that. him that <laughs> <laughs> we can say that. Do you use the same gear live as you do when you're recording? No. No, uh, because we we can't travel with our huge uh, tube amps. No. So uh, and and usually we have really small budgets on the tours, so we can't bring a lot of stuff or put it on the plane. You know, it's really expensive to check in heavy luggage. So. Uh, we are making our uh, backline very small, so instead of a huge tube amp for the guitars and the bass, we use small pedals that sound really great. Oh, really? What what, what kind of pedals do you uh, use? We use uh, on the guitars a small mower. Ah, it's like a small, you know, uh, matchbox. I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's this big. <laughs> yeah, it's a guitar pedal of the smaller size, yes. like. Uh, uh, like a smaller even than an MXR pedal, I think. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's those mini, mini mm. pedals. And from those, uh, or from that preamp, uh, we have a cabinet simulator. Ah. A two notes uh, torpedo. Yeah, no, the uh, torpedo. Cab, where, cab M, a small, really small. Where you can load the e uh, uh, IRs, the impulse, right? Yes, impulse yeah. response IRs. Yeah. And we have made our own uh, IRs from from the studio, so we use those. And when we do that, we always know that we have the best guitar sound we can have, because uh, uh, you never know if you, sometimes we, we are traveling with a sound engineer, or sometimes you are having a surprise every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, they may not put the microphone where we think. No. Uh, sound, or maybe, you, you know, it's the, yeah. And at least you get the sound you're used to, yeah, exactly. so you can practice with the same sound that you are gonna perform with. Yeah, yeah. So it works really well. But do you have backline drums when you come to a gig? Uh, yeah, I mean, on tour we share the drum sets. Uh, we, we travel with the same drum sets. We were traveling with uh, other bands. Yeah, well. with other bands. But when we like Russia, for example, we. We played on the back line that the venue provided, and it was uh, very interesting. Oh. And, and one thing I learned... Very interesting. <laughs> Sounds a bit like it was a bit difference in quality. Uh, yeah, but I mean, 
I always bring my cymbals, my pedals and uh, snare. Yeah. But one thing I've learned that, that probably is the most important thing to bring is the, the drum throne, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it was a very, yeah, share. It, it was very, very annoying in Russia because <laughs> I played on a lot of shares that was like, I mean, the, the metal thing had gone through the seating and it was, uh, and uh, it was really bad. Um, and they collapsed sometimes? Yeah, collapsed. I fell sometimes <laughs> and uh, I, I, and I headbang a lot, so I need uh, the balance, you know, and yeah. it's when you, it's really hard. Yeah. So a drum drum throne or chair, that's, that's really something I'm going to bring in the future tours. Uh, you've already mentioned this a little bit, but how do you prepare your gear for touring? You have like a pedal board and two guitars maybe or... Actually, I only bring one guitar because only of one. the space and the, the price of flying. Yeah. So... Uh, but that's that's the thing you bring. Yeah, I bring a guitar, a pedal board. Um, yeah, I think that's it for my guitar for sound. You, yeah. And my own uh, SM58 Beta yeah. microphone. I don't want to lick the other vocalists in the mouth every day. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's going to share your spit. No. 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 <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, Jocke on bass also brings a small pedal board, I think. Yeah. And Gusto too. Yes. Yeah. Now we have gotten to know a little bit of your band. But you've been a part of this music style for a very long time. Yeah. I read somewhere that the band started in, in 99. Yeah, it began 99. Like a, an embryo, yes, embryo yes. At, in 99. A small seed. Yes. Uh, but I think the first live show was in 2006, probably, okay. around that time. So it took a long time before it was just a small studio project or a side project for me. How come it took a long time? Was it because you finally realized that now we have something to provide or...? Yeah, I think so. Because I was, in 99, I was uh, doing some kind of uh, studio education here in town. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to record some a song for just for doing something in the studio so I made up a band that would play slower than my main band at that time okay uh, that band is, was called chastisement it's no longer active and uh, so I liked it yeah. and I wrote a couple of more songs I think maybe four and uh, recorded that but then we started to talking like maybe we should try to play this live it would be fun yeah right so we got a more a five piece band and we played live back then in 2006 or oh. four 2006 i think how long have you been part of the band since 2013 i think mm -hmm. so seven years yeah yeah time flies time flies no six years because 2020 doesn't count no no <laughs> no let's forget that year do you listen to other kinds of music oh yeah yeah i do yeah yeah. Want to tell me? And in what situations do you listen to other kinds of music? I mean, all the time. I I, I don't mostly listen to metal, actually. I, I listen to a lot of... I don't know what to call it. I mean, Nine Inch Nails. I like Coldplay. I like... I mean, it's... I don't know, but all but kinds the, of rock and pop music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if I like it, I like it. But but the metal is always there. I mean, ah, and okay. it's yeah. But I, yeah. Mm. How is it um, for me that is not a metal fan the same way as you are? I appreciate it, and I, I sort of, I can see the skill and passion that's gone into your work. I have. For me, trouble listening to metal when I'm listening to a record, but I love to go and see it live, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to feel that energy. And, and so, is 
is that the same way? Could it be the same way with other genres for you? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I appreciate the feelings or the, the emotions of a, I don't know, Anna Ternheim or... Uh, you can listen to classical choir live, but maybe you sh don't listen to it on a record, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I think that's important that live music has something special, mm. some kind of nerve that is impossible to print on a record. Yeah, yeah. and we hear that a lot with people going to our shows. Before before they see the show, they're like, what the fuck, when they hear us on the record. Uh. But when they see us live, they're like, oh shit, that was really good. Because uh. it's, a, mm. it's a feeling that yeah. only appears when it's live. It's, it's real. Yeah. yeah. This is not a full-time job for you, uh, no. the studio work and the band. But we can say nearly it's a part-time job because it's sort of little more than a hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you work as a software programmer or something? Yeah, that's correct. And you work uh, as a sound engineer and, and, and technical advisor, yeah. sort of, at a theater? Yep. Yeah. Um, do you have other hobbies than this? I like to ride mountain bike in the woods and uh, photography. Photography? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, I like skiing, but I don't do it anymore. But I, I think I have to like get on with it again. And in general, I like the nature, just walking in the woods and, yeah. Because I believe, and you may agree or not, but I believe that it's really important when you are creative in music or in any kind of art that you have other hobbies to get away from that creative spot because I'm my mind would blow up if I did it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do other things also. Yeah. Yeah, cooking. I like cooking as well. I like to eat. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, thank you. I have a segment I called Seven Quick Ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have to answer, I will say uh, this or that, and you have to s answer one of them. All right. So in recording, amp or camper? Amp. amp. If you can only choose one microphone, you get 20 pieces of that microphone, but only choose one microphone to use for the rest of your life. Is it a d dynamic or a condenser? Dynamic. Condenser. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Iron Maiden or Metallica? Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> oh, both of you <laughs> at the same time. Heroes. Yeah. Cross-country skiing or downhill? Downhill. Oh, both of you. Reggae or country? Reggae. Reggae. Oh, you're you're very fast. Uh, <laughs> studio or live? Live. Studio. Oh. oh. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I don't know. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I like studio. Okay. I stick with studio. <laughs> and the last one. In the tour bus, music or silence? Silence. silence. So what is the Swedish word of today? Kärlek. Yeah. Which means? Love. And say it once again in Swedish. Kärlek. Love. Roger that. Roger that. Roger that.